Ho, we're back. Uh, we're going to not do anything bolt action today. I got a box full of parts here. We're going to build a 22 arc. Excited to jump back into some building. I'm Eagle Run 23. I am glad that you're here. And before we get into it, we're crossing 90,000 subscribers, a crazy number that I never dreamed possible. That was not the intention, uh, was to make a big YouTube channel. I was just filming some stuff out here at my desk and I thought I would upload it. And uh, all these years later, we've we've grown a great community. I, I appreciate you guys watching. So make sure you're subscribed because 93% of you watching this video are not subscribed. So maybe you're just watching and you're curious, but I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. But if you don't want to, that's totally fine. Uh, if you're just curious, that's what today's caliber is actually about. Uh, someone who's curious about what else is an option, what else is out there. So the 22 arc is actually a caliber that probably shouldn't exist on paper, uh, but it's here and it does something pretty unique and it does that thing really well. So let's break down why someone would actually want to build one of these, uh, what makes it different and what you're actually looking at when you're holding on to one of these rifles. The 22 arc stands for advanced rifle cartridge. A uh, relatively new round, but it's purpose-built for gas guns, AR-15s, and uh, that's where it gets interesting. Most people think bigger is better, and while that's generally true, more powder, more velocity, but that also equals more recoil. I got a box full of parts here, almost everything we need to make this rifle. We're going to go over those components here in just a second. The 22 arc does something different. It takes a high efficiency, high ballistic coefficient bullet, uh, the kind of bullets that precision shooters obsess over, and it launches them from a standard AR-15 with minimal recoil. It's the thinking man's shooting caliber. Now, if you're building an AR, you've got options. Of course, you could go 223 Remington. That's the standard, it's everywhere, ammo is cheap. The only problem with the 223 is it really runs out of gas uh, past three, four, five hundred yards. You're fighting wind drift and those bullets, they drop like crazy. On the other end of the world, you've got the OG hog killer, the 6.5 Grendel. It's a beast. The Grendel is one of my favorite calibers. It has no problem stretching out past a thousand yards and it shoots a 6.5 millimeter uh, 120 grain, 130 grain bullet. Some people even shoot the 140s. But the Grendel does have some recoil, and that's where the 22 arc sets kind of right in the middle of these. It shoots flatter than the Grendel, it's faster than the Grendel, it's got more range than a 223, and minimal recoil staying on targets. I keep talking about recoil because when you're coyote hunting, um, if you miss, a follow-up shot is necessary. So we're already in a gas gun, we're loaded back up after we pull the trigger, ready to get that next one on. And if you're just kind of popping through your sights there, that thing's not jumping, you're having a hard time staying on the coyote if you jump in your scope and you can't see it after you pull the trigger. Why this cartridge even exists? Over the last decade, ammo manufacturers figured out how to make a 22 caliber bullet with the ballistic coefficient that used to be absolutely impossible. We're talking about bullets that cut through the wind like they're on rails. High BC means less drift. Less drift means you can shoot further and stay accurate. But the problem that these manufacturers ran into is when you take these big, sleek, fancy 22 bullets and you load them up into a standard 223 case, you quickly run out of case capacity. The bullet takes up too much room. There's not enough powder, not enough space to push it fast enough to actually make a difference. And someone asked a question, what if we stuff it into a bigger case with more capacity, but yet stays in the AR-15 magazine overall length? And here's the 22 arc. 
Okay, ballistics, talking numbers here, 62 grain ELD VT, that's the varmint bullet from Hornady. Uh, from a 24 inch barrel, you're looking at 3,300 feet per second. That's fast, that's flat, and that's wildly efficient. Compared to the 6.5 Grendel, you're looking at 26 to 2,800 feet per second heavier bullet. The arc is faster out of the gate, which maintains velocity longer downrange. Uh, by the time you're at 1,000 yards, that velocity advantage compounds into real accuracy benefits. And that's what matters when you're hunting or doing anything precision. Uh, energy retention. The arc doesn't have the raw power of the Grendel, but it doesn't really need to. Again, this is a niched down cartridge. And hear me, this is not for everyone. Anything out to 500 yards, the minimal recoil, faster follow-up shots, you'll be back on target in a heartbeat. Possibly an application here for precision shooters, people who are competing, people who care about group sizes. Uh, the arc is designed for accuracy. And then a, a little bit longer range varmint hunter, guys who want to go beyond what a 223 can do, uh, but maybe don't want the uh, recoil of going to a larger all-around uh, you can hunt deer with this, you know, maybe ethically, you pick the distance, but maybe three, 400 yards. Let's say that you've got an AR that is already set up. It's already got the Geisley trigger. It's already got everything you want. And uh, you could just throw an upper on something like this. And you've got the familiarity of your controls. Everything is the same as what you're used to on an AR-15. You just swap that upper. Maybe you've got a thermal on there. And uh, that same lower can go hunting for you. So I guess the appeal here is that it's niche down, but it's also very versatile. That flatter trajectory just means that there's no math to do in the field, no dialing. You can just kind of estimate, I need to go a little high at this distance, and it's so flat uh, that you're still on target. I know you're screaming at me, yeah, but the ammo is expensive. Uh, if you're a reloader, you're reloading for normal prices. These components aren't particularly uh, expensive. If you're not a reloader, you're going to be limited on what you can find at the stores. There's not going to be a ton of options, but there are more and more options all along the way. Recently, I've seen Howworks Ballistics has introduced a 22 arc, so we're definitely going to hit that up. Uh, we'll also run our RCBS dies and be reloading for this. Uh, more on that down the road. We are going to start off with the Hornady uh, ELD VT. That's where we'll start out and uh, we'll reload that brass into some other 6mm bullets that I think uh, will do well. All those reasons are why we're building one, well we're starting to build one today. And uh, let's go over the components. I never just throw random parts together. Each thing is chose carefully with consideration in order to do something specific. And that's why I chose this lower. This is the premium lower from 80% Arms, uh, finished by myself and Cerakoted by our friends at BMF Battleworks. This lower has ambi controls. It's got some cool style, flared magwell. Uh, really like this. I've had this for a while, been looking for the right project for it, and I think this is it. The upper receiver is Faxon, very basic upper receiver. We didn't choose anything fancy here. I like to use Faxon whenever possible, and so we're gonna throw a Faxon on this one. Okay, the barrel. No surprise to you here. Uh, we chose another Faxon, and we also went short. This is a 16-inch 22 arc barrel. You guys know I like short barrels. I don't want anything crazy long uh, in and out of the deer blind. I'm already going to throw a suppressor on here, so it's going to be plenty long. Um, so I went with 16. You could definitely go 20, 22. Um, no problem with that. If you're going to suppress it, though, 22 with a suppressor is way too long. This is the Match Series from Faxon, and it has a 1 in 7 twist. And this is the upgraded 416 steel. I like their barrels. Uh, went with a thinner profile because you know we're not going to be we're not going to be heating this thing way up. So a couple two three shots, it won't get hot on us. And so thinner profile barrel, save a little bit of weight. I'm fine with that. The handguard is from Breek Arms. 
This is actually the second Breek Arms handguard that we have run. This is the RG2 handguard, solid lockup, very beefy and strong, but it's very thin and it's not crazy heavy. This is actually the second Breek handguard that we've run. Uh, so far, we're probably gonna leave this black. We could potentially get this Cerakoted. I'm not opposed to that, but I also really like the kind of black and tan look there. I think that's kind of cool. Definitely going to run a Die Free Company. I've got a black Die Free Company Kung Fu grip. Try to put those on everything whenever we get a chance. As for the stock, Magpul PRS Lite. This is left over from another project that got taken off of. Um, yeah, that, that, could be, that could be just fine. This might be the right stock for this build. Uh, we're probably not going to shoot this gun prone, so you know, having a big bag rider surface on the bottom, uh, not really an issue. This will be mostly shot out of a deer stand or um, maybe off a tripod. Okay, Breek Arms also has their muzzle device, and this will allow us to run the Ekron suppressor. These are really cool. They just uh, twist off and you can switch your suppressor around because it has that hub. So this is the Ekron. This is from Stealth Additive Works. These are a little bit hard to find. You're gonna have to go to Stealth Additive. They'll tell you where your local dealer is. A Little bit of a flow through design, but you've got that hub on there that you can swap out. I like Breek uh, just because I'm trying to be um, inside of a system, but there's other hub manufacturers out there. I like Breek and that'll allow me to just swap this to every AR-15 and I can run six arc, 22 arc, of course, two, two, three, five, five, six. Um, I'm looking forward to that setup. Faxon also sent their new adjustable gas block. Uh, this is a 625, which will work perfect with our barrel. And uh, they also sent a gas tube. So I think that's the right length. This is rifle length. So uh, that should be fine for us. The optic is still to be determined. Up here, I've got an ATN that doesn't have a job. It's the uh, the Thor night vision. It has an external IR. Uh, that could be good because it works well in day and night. Uh, but of course, we could put the DNT Hydra on here. That's a pure thermal. Um, that would limit us a little bit in the daytime as far as daytime plinking. So maybe something like that would work well. Um, DNT also makes the Zulus, which could also be a good option. Um, I'll have links for all that on this build list. You can check all those options out. Last on the list, we're going to run an Elf Trigger. Um, for some reason, it's not in my box, but I have an Elf Trigger for this project. Uh, like to run Elfman Tactical whenever possible. Uh, Art Elfman's a great guy. He makes a great trigger and the adjustability on that trigger, you can set it up exactly the way you like it. Um, really cool triggers. So I think I've pretty much got everything I need. I've got a lower parts kit. We've got an upper parts kit. Um, I guess I just need to get to work, but this is, I'm a craftsman. This is a quality operation. I'm not going to throw this together. Uh, we're going to go through and take our time. I'll bring you along and show you what's happening. And very soon, we'll get this out on a coyote hunt. Uh, we'll also do some group testing and things like that. And then ultimately, down the road, we'll be reloading. That'll happen over on Eagle Reloads, our reloading channel. Uh, YouTube's not a big fan when we do that stuff on this channel. Looking forward to running that Breek Hub and the Ekron on this build. That's one of the things I'm most excited about. And also, just getting back to a gas gun. Uh, we like to do gas gun things. We did that for a long time. That's what the channel was built on. And the last year or so, there's been a lot of bolt actions. But uh, if you want to follow along, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Uh, just click the uh, little subscribe button there. Uh, turn on your notifications. Also, giveaway stuff is happening very soon. You're going to want to sign up for the email list because you have to be on the email list in order to win the giveaway. Thanks again for watching, whether you're a subscriber or you're just curious and you're watching. You're welcome either way. We'll see you next time.